How many are happy to be in the presence of God this afternoon? Me too. You know, just like Brit was saying, there's no better place to be, amen? There is no better place. You try naming it. There, there's no better place to be than in the presence of God, amen? And there's no better word that we can have except the word of God, amen? Amen? I would encourage you. I was just thinking about it as we were worshiping today. And, you know, the word of God is life for us. And I would just encourage you, if you don't have a Bible, invest in a Bible. It's an investment. Get yourself a good Bible that you can open up and read. Read the Word of God. Invest your time reading and, 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 and studying the Word of God and, and getting that life from Him because He's our hope. There's lots of hopelessness out in the world. There's lots of pain out in the world, but Jesus is our hope. The Word of God is our hope. Amen? So get into the Word of God. Today, we're going to start a new series on the church. Why do we get together as the church? Why do we come together every Sunday? Why do we study the Word of God? Why do we gather together in small groups? Why do we have school of ministry where we study and get into the Word of God. What is this church all about? What is the church all about? Before we get into it, though, I want us to use our imagination a little bit. How many have a good imagination? Well, some of us? All right, it's where we, we think and we imagine what things could be like. I want us to go back in time, maybe about, let's say about 2,500 years ago. And we lived in a, pretend, let's imagine that we live in a nation called the nation of Greece. It's a large nation uh, around the Mediterranean. They expanded, they expanded into different areas, all, a lot of, uh, a lot of Europe and into, uh, into Asia and some into uh, Africa as well. And we were citizens of this land called Greece. Maybe we lived in a city called Athens, the capital city of Greece. And maybe we lived there, and, and one of the things that would happen on a regular basis, maybe about three or four times a month, there would be someone who would, would be called a herald or someone who would call people together to meet together. They would call all the citizens of Greece and say, come, come, we're going to meet together. We're going to have a big meeting, and we're going to talk about what the government of Greece has been deciding. We're going to talk about the laws. We're going to talk about some of the new messages that have come from Greece. And these people would get together on a regular basis, and we would be, we would be called out of our houses, and we'd get together, and we'd gather together, and we'd listen to what they were saying from, from the capital of Greece. And we'd also talk about different things. We'd make decisions. And this was what was called in Greece at that time, what was called the ecclesia. It was called the calling out of the citizens of a place to gather together and to meet together. And in the Bible, Jesus said that I will build my church. This word church is the same word, ecclesia. It's a calling out and a gathering together and a hearing of the message and a, and a spending of time together. That's what Ecclesia means. There's another verse that helps us to understand the church a little bit. Um, obviously, there's a few things in this illustration that kind of break down a little bit. We're a heavenly nation. We're not a, an earthly nation. Uh, we, we gather together for worship and spending time in the presence of God. But there's another example in the Bible also that tells us a little bit more about this thing called the church. And Stephen, there's a man in the Bible named Stephen. Now, Stephen was one of the leaders in the church. He was actually a deacon in the early church in the book of Acts. And he ended up being the first martyr that was recorded in the Bible. 
Uh, he, is, he is the guy who was stoned, and he was the first martyr that was recorded. Before he was stoned, though, he gave this big, long message. And he was talking to uh, the Jews, and he was talking to the people who ended up stoning him. And he was talking a little bit about the history of, uh, of the, the Jewish people, of the Hebrew people, and some of the things that happened throughout their history. One of the verses that he said, he was talking about uh, Moses and when Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt. And he said, this is the Moses. This is Acts chapter 7, verse 37 to 38. He said, this is the Moses who said to the Israelites, God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brothers. In verse 38, listen to this. This is the one who is in the congregation in the wilderness. Okay, so that word congregation in the wilderness. So basically there's a group of people in the wilderness. He's talking about the Israelites who left Egypt and they were in the wilderness wandering around following the leading of God. The congregation in the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him at Mount Sinai and with our fathers. He received living oracles to give to us. This word that Stephen used when he said the congregation is the same word, the ecclesia. The ecclesia, the called out ones. This gives us a, a, a new, a, a, a better, clearer picture of the church of God and what, God, what the, the apostles were talking about when they said the church. Stephen said, Stephen said that the children of Israel were the ecclesia, the church in the wilderness. And if we look at what God did for the children of Israel in the wilderness, we can see what God wants to do with and through the church today. In the wilderness, God led the Israelites. God led the Israelites. It says that God was with them. He covered them. It says he was a cloud by day and a fire by night. What does a cloud do? Well, when it's sunny and it's hot, you're walking around in a desert, you want some clouds, right? Because the sun will fry your skin. The sun will, will, will turn your skin all shades of red. You'll burn, and, and uh, it'll just be painful to walk around. Even, you know, even though the ground that you walk on will be hot because of the sun. But with a cloud, there's relief. And the cloud comes and protects says that God himself was the cloud by day. What do you also need in a, in, a, in a desert at night? Well, you need fire. They say that in deserts, I've never, I never, I've never spent a night in a desert before, but they say in the, during the day in the desert it's super, super hot, but then because there's no ground to, to, to there's no like soil or anything to hold the heat at night, it gets really, really cold. And so, and so at night, you need a fire, but also you need light to lead you, to show you where you need to go. And that's what God was to them. He actually led them. He was a, the cloud by day, and he was a fire by night. And it says that the presence of God himself was with the Israelites. God protected the Israelites. God protected the Israelites from the Egyptians and other enemies. Uh, in the encounter with the Egyptians before they crossed the Red Sea, the fire itself actually came and was a separation between the Egyptians and the Israelites to protect the Israelites from the Egyptian army. And also God did many miracles as they were, as they were wandering through the desert. They met enemies. They, they had battles. But God did miraculous things. God provided for the Israelites. God provided with miraculous water, with manna, with quail. God was their daily provision for the church in the wilderness. God met with the Israelites. He met with Moses on Mount Sinai. He gave them his law. Just like the, the, the Greek government would, would, would proclaim the law to all of the citizens of Greece, God also met with, these, with the Israelites, gave them his word, gave them his message. This is my way. 
This is the way of life. Walk in it. This was God's word to the Israelites. This was God's message to his people. God provided a structure of leadership through Moses and the elders in the, in the Old Testament while the Israelites were going through the wilderness. God taught them how to trust him. You know, if you every day have to go out and get manna, you're living a life of trusting God every single day. Only on the sixth day did God give two days worth. But every other day, they had to go out. At the end of the day, they didn't have anything. They had enough for the day, but at the end of the day, their cupboards were bare. And they had to trust God. They said, okay, God, all right, tomorrow morning I'm going to wake up and go and get some more manna. They had to trust. They had to learn how to trust God. They had to learn how to fight. God taught them how to fight. Uh, Jake, uh, sorry, Joshua led them in battle. They didn't just, you know, just kind of sit around and wait for God to strike their enemies. And God did a lot of that, but there were steps that they had to take. They had to walk around Jericho. They had to engage in battle with the Midianites and other people. God taught them how to fight. And then God delivered him into the promised land. And these are the things that God wants to do and God is doing through his church. Amen? Turn to your neighbor and say, I am a called out one. I am a called out one. God called his people out of Egypt. God led them personally. God prepared the way. Think about what would happen if you were one of the Israelites, you woke up one day and said, I'm just going to follow God all by myself. I'm going to follow God and uh, just me and God. I don't, need, I, don't need the, I don't need the Israelites. I don't need the church in the wilderness. I'm going to go and I'm going to follow my own way. I'm gonna, it's, it's just going to be me and God. And you start to wander off and you you're say to the cloud, okay, cloud, I'm going this way. And you start to go this way, and you say, Cloud, come on, come on, God, come on with me. I'm going this way, come on, God. You and me, God, you and me. And you keep walking away, and the cloud doesn't go with you. And God's standing there looking at, Don't you know, I'm leading you, I'm leading your life as I lead the church, as I lead the people of God. God has put each one of us here for a purpose. God has put each one of us here for a reason. And God leads your life personally as you are involved in the church and as he leads the church. That's why it's so important that it says in Hebrews, it says, do not forsake coming together as a church. God has a plan for your life in the church, through the church. If I look back on my life personally, all the good things that God has blessed my life in, it's been through the church. It's been through his body. It's his called out ones. We weren't made to live life by ourselves, but God has put us in a church. He put us in a family for a reason. There's also two different kinds of church mentioned in the Bible. Same church, but they kind of, they're connected together. Jesus said, he said, in Matthew chapter 16, Verses 18 to 19. I'm not sure if we have it up on the screen or not. These guys will help me out. If not, I'll just go ahead and read it. All right, here we go. Matthew 16, 18 to 19. He says, I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. So who's building the church? Who's building the church? Jesus is building his church. Jesus said, I will build my church. This church doesn't belong, yeah, there it is. This church doesn't belong to a person. This is Jesus' church. This is Jesus' building. I mean, not the physical building, but he's what's, we are the people that God, that Jesus himself is building. It says, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. This is what Jesus is building. This is what Jesus is building. The church is what Jesus is building. He's not building 
a business. He's not building, you know, a, a structure. He's not building a, uh, okay, let's get the biggest building. He's not, he's not building that. He's building the church, the people. What he's talking about here is the church worldwide. We say, in English we use the word, the universal church. It would be every church, every person, the, every person who believes in Jesus, that he's the, the, the Savior of the world, and that he's the, the Lord. Every church that believes in the name of the Lord Jesus is part of the universal church. So it's not just one church that Jesus is building. It's not a church. It's not New Life Fellowship by itself that Jesus is building. But we're connected with many, many churches all around the world. Think about it. We're just one part of this universal church that God is building all throughout the world. You know, there's a church in, you know, all the different countries in Africa, in Europe, all parts of Asia, South America, North America. You are part of something massive that's happening in the world today. You know, we look and we just see that how many people are in our church. No, there's way, 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 way more than that. I remember the very, very first time I came to Cambodia. Back in, oh, 1996. And I remember attending New Life Fellowship for the very, very first time. And we were in a small building not too far from, Olympi uh, from Olympic Stadium. We were renting a villa at the time. And there were services going already. I, w I wasn't part of planting from the very, very beginning. But I remember that first church service at that, at that building over, in, uh, over by Olympic Market there. And one of the things that struck me so much, I had been raised in a, I had been raised in a church, uh, a great church in, back in Hamilton, uh, Living Hope Church back in Hamilton. And uh, I, I was raised in that church, and I love, love, love that church. And that's where I grew up as a, a young man, as a, as a Christian, and, um, you know, just experiencing the presence of God and just feeling God's presence there. Sometimes when you never get to see another place, it's always like, oh, yeah, my church is the best church. And, you know, it's, it's good to have, to be proud of your church. And I think New Life is one of the best churches in the world. I'm so proud of New Life Fellowship. But I remember the first time that I came, and we were singing some of these songs, like we sang today in worship. But it was all in Khmer. We didn't have any English services back then. We might have had English translation, I'm not sure. Um, but everything was in Kamai. But some of the songs that we were singing were songs that I was familiar with because I knew the words and I could sing them in English, but uh, everything was being sung in Kamai. And so, obviously, I didn't know how to sing because I couldn't, you know, I couldn't even begin to pronounce some of the words because it was my very, very first time. Um, but I just remember the presence of God being so real in that place. And the same presence of God. Here was a bunch of Cambodian Christians, Khmer Christians, singing in Khmer. And I was trying to sing along too. I wasn't doing a very good job. But the presence of God was so real. And, it's, and it struck me because the same presence of God that I felt back in my church in Canada I felt here in Phnom Penh as well. And I couldn't understand the words. I didn't know what people were saying. But the presence of God was there. Just like the presence of God was here today. The presence of God is the same presence of God in Africa, in Asia, in Europe, in South America, in North America, all around the world. God is moving mightily. And we are a part of the universal church. And God is doing great things in this world. Amen? You are a part of something amazing that's happening in the world. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen? That's God's promise. That's Jesus' promise. He is building his church. And he's promised that the gates of hell will not prevail against it. 
And that's what he was talking about in Matthew chapter 16. But as we can see in the book of Acts, and as we go through uh, the New Testament, we also see that there are local churches as well. That's, what, that's the word that we use for individual churches in certain areas or certain cities. And we would be a local church in Stun Che. We'd be a local church in Phnom Penh. We are not the universal church, but we're part of the universal church. And this is the area where God has given us influence. And so a local church is a church of called out ones that meet together in a certain area where God has given them influence. And God has called us to call others into that community with us. And that's, and that's what we do in evangelism. But we also go and we plant other churches as well. And that's why, you know, we don't just have our church here in Stumming Che, but we have churches all over the country. We've been planting churches. We also have uh, our Tolson Kai campus. That would be another church. That's their area of influence in Tolson Kai. But then we also have all of the other churches all around the country that we have planted, over 300 of them. That God is doing something, and God is... God is working in those areas as well. So God has had a plan. Jesus is building his church. Listen to what, listen to how Ephesians describes the church. This is Ephesians chapter 5, verses 23 to 27. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. The church is the bride of Christ. The church is the bride of Christ. I can't think of anything more beautiful of a picture than the bride of Jesus. I can't think of anything that a man loves more than his bride. Jesus loves the church. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you individually, but Jesus also loves you as part of the church as well. And he gave up his life for the church. He loves the church. And it says here in Ephesians, it says that he's preparing a bride for himself. He's preparing the bride, the getting the wedding dress ready, making sure there's no spots, making sure it's clean, making sure it's ironed and clean. That's what Jesus is doing for his bride. That's what Jesus is doing for the church. And Jesus loves the bride. Jesus loves his church. And new life is also part of this bride. Jesus loves new life fellowship. Amen? Jesus loves new life fellowship. And we're so happy to be a part of what God's doing. And, and you know, I, I think about that verse in Matthew 16 where Jesus says, I am building my church. I can't think of anything better to do than to give our lives to partnering with Jesus to build his church. Amen. New Life Fellowship also has the leadership team here at, at New Life. And I just want to take a couple of minutes just to introduce you to our, to our leadership team. We have our group of elders. You know, in the Old Testament, you guys go ahead and put that first uh, picture up. In the Old Testament, God said to Moses to choose elders. And the elders were to receive the same spirit that Moses had, to bear the burden of leadership with Moses. And it also says in... Uh, in the New Testament, Paul says to Timothy and to Titus, he says, appoint elders in every church that you go to, and every, every local church. And so in New Life Fellowship, we also have our group of elders. 
And from left to right, here we go. We have uh, Mr. Laksopi, Mr. Sampal Makara, uh, myself, Pastor Liang Samadhi, uh, Lokru uh, Heng Sota, Brother Sota, uh, Brother uh, Kongmara and Leah over here. If you guys could stand up, anybody who's here, stand up. Let's give these guys a hand. God is doing something great in our church. Thank you, guys. God is doing something great in our church, and he has chosen a great group of leaders to lead New Life Fellowship, to be part of moving into the future for all that God has for us. And I believe we have a we have great, great future ahead of us, not because of anything we do, but because of who is building his church and who loves his church, and that's Jesus. You know, if this were a man-made operation, there would be cause for nervousness. There would be cause for, oh, I don't know what's going to happen in the future. But man is not building this church. Man is not building this church. Jesus himself is building his church. We also have another great group of leaders who would be equivalent, I guess you would say, to deacons in our church, and they lead many of the ministries of the church. This is known as our staff leadership team, or the SLT for short. And in that group, we have three elders there. We, once again, we have uh, uh, Pastor Samadhi, uh, Brother Sota, and Brother Mara. We also have uh, a group of seven other uh, staff leaders. From left to right, we have kind of blurry here a little bit. That's uh, Petra and Krong, Pise, Rota, Chatria, Virak, and uh, Chatria. Okay? Chatria is the, uh, the, he's, the, yeah, sorry, he's the campus pastor. I forgot. He's the campus pastor over at our Tolson Kai campus. And so if any of the SLT are here, can you guys stand up as well? We want to give you guys a hand. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys for serving. Thank you guys for serving the Church of God. We really appreciate your service. We appreciate all of the time that you give to his house. And I want to encourage each one of us, give value to what Jesus gives value to. Jesus values his church. Jesus loves his church. Jesus is building his church. You know, I was thinking a, a number of years ago just about value and where do we get our value from? And the thought came to me is that we get our value from the one who values us the most. Jesus is the one who values us and we need to put a value on what he puts a value on. He's called us into relationship with him, not just to, you know, receive his love. I mean, it's all good to be in relationship with him, but he's called us for a purpose. He's called us for a purpose. He didn't just call us to, you know, okay, yeah, become a Christian and sit around and wait till you die so that you can go to heaven. No. The church is an active church. The church is an active church. It's not just a gathering of people, but it's the called out ones. The called out ones means that even in our name, we have a duty, a responsibility to call others. We have a responsibility to say, look, this is who we are. As a church, let's call out others. Let's evangelize. Let's tell people their value. Let's tell people about Jesus who loves us and values us. This is who we are as a church. Amen? You have a purpose. You have a purpose in the church. You are important to New Life Fellowship. New Life Fellowship wouldn't be who we are without you. So I want to thank you, but I also want to be an encouragement to you as we finish here. Let's take that calling seriously. Let's put a value on what Jesus has put a value on. And let's be who Jesus has called us to be, the called out ones. Amen? Let's all stand together. Let's all stand together.
Hallelujah. Jesus, we thank you for your presence in our lives. We thank you that we are the church, the called out ones. God, and just like you called the Israelites to be a nation of kings and priests, a nation of kings and priests who would lead the nations to you, that was their calling. God, you have also called us to be kings and priests, sons and daughters of God, who lead people to you, who follow you, but also lead people and call others out to you. God, we, we say again, we say afresh, God, we commit ourselves to you. Thank you for making us a part of this house. Thank you for making us a part of this church. Thank you for calling us, for putting a calling on our lives. But God, it doesn't stop with us. Let it not stop with us. Let it continue. Let it go on. Let it for generations and generations and generations because Jesus is building his church. Thank you, Jesus, for your faithfulness to us. Jesus, we thank you for your faithfulness to us. We give our lives to you. We give New Life Fellowship. We give our church to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Have an awesome week. And be the church. Be the church out there. Amen. Awesome. God bless you guys. See you next week.